There is only one thing on this earth more powerful than evil, and that's us. Hi, I'm Nicholas Brendan, and you're listening to the Buffy Back Issue Ben. Welcome back to the Buffy Back Issue Ben, the show where we go through all of the Buffy comics that are canon chronologically. In the show where we also barely talk about Buffy so far. Yeah, well, we had that those that one episode. Did we do it in one? One. Yeah. yeah. Well, whatever. We'll she'll, come back to her. She'll show up eventually. Yeah, she'll be there. It's going to take a while still. Well. Whatever. Whatever. This week is kind of a big week. This is our penultimate episode before we start getting into post-show stuff. Fancy word. Why'd you, you just looked at me like I didn't know the word penultimate. Because I like the word penultimate, and sometimes you don't always use the big words, and I like the big words. This week we are talking about the very last thing before we get into the post shows altogether. We are talking about Spike Shadow Puppets. In which the puppets from Smile Time make a reappearance. Sadly, there are no shadow puppets. That's really true. Not one on a single wall. No. They should have at least made, like, some little reference to that so the title's a lie yeah starting out and much like spike asylum that we talked about last episode originally this series was supposed to take place in the old idw canon and for those who didn't hear that quick recap idw was putting out comics for angel and then they got joss to come over and do some ones that were canon according to him but in two Spike books, there was a character that he liked, and that carried over, and then other characters and story elements carried over as well. So even though the Spike book was originally supposed to take place after Season 5 in a different established canon to fit within the universe, it now has to sneak its way into uh, towards the end of Season 5, and it doesn't fit super smooth. Nah, <laughs> it's kind of like how the other one didn't fit quite exactly right, but... The other one was more of a tweak. This is more of a... Just go Ig- with it. Ignore ten pages. Yeah, it's... And that's kind of a shame, because it's not a bad book at all. It just... It was written in a time in which it, it was following the canon that had been established, and then the canon changed around it, so... Yeah. It you gotta w- give it a little leeway on that one. Yeah, we could try and make some excuses for it, but it is gonna be a tough fit. Based on content where I would place this one, if we have to, and we do, and it doesn't fit, super well is probably after episode 18 origin and before episode 19 time bomb so after connor has come back and maybe has his memories and maybe other people have it and that's a confusing ball of wax i'll get into in a little while but not this episode it never makes any sense (laughs) ah whatever (laughs) um not at all it wildly contradicts itself at least you're admitting it every time they mention it but uh, yeah, after Connor and maybe others, or maybe not, have memories back. Right. So this Spike book uh, takes place, I think it says something around four months after the Spike book that we last read. Yep. So that works out roughly. Yeah, it's a little easier if you just kind of, you just kind of have to roll with it. So there's an inner monologue. This book opens up with an inner monologue. Spike is doing Spike things. Actually, it opens up with somebody dying, which was minorly confusing. You're right. It has one page of an old man dying. Well, because I like little old men, and I was sad that he died. It does have a weird note. So this is all supposed to be oh, in, yeah, that's in right. Japanese, which is all fine and dandy. Like, whenever you see that, you see it all the time in comics where they say, like, translated from such and such. But this first panel, and it's not consistent, it says translated from the Japanese. Yeah, it's odd. But the, the, they do the Japanese thing a few more times, but the awkward the is dropped. Yeah. It is awkward. So, panel one. Off to a weird start. Yeah, and then somebody dies, a little old man dies, which makes me sad, because I really do like little old men, and we jump right into Spike's inner monologue. Yep, and he's in the middle of a barroom brawl. Again. As one does. And he's having an inner monologue that he's like, good thing I'm all done being on those two shows. I'm not the sidekick to anyone anymore, and I haven't seen anyone in a while, and I'm all by myself. Right, so a little awkward here is that the premise of this whole book is that it's post both shows, but we clearly just established that it can't be. Yeah. The angels over my shoulder are gone, baby, gone, except that I still hang out at his office a bunch. Right. So... That's not the book's fault. No, I just feel really bad for the book, because you can't go back and change that, and they were just trying to work with what was already established, and other yeah. than that, it's it's a... It's a pretty good book, so if you can get past that awkwardness, you're going to be fine. 
And there's even, they don't mention it directly, but it is supposed to be a reference. He talks about all these things that he's done, that um, he was living in the basement of a Slayer sorority house, playing good boy office drone, being locked up in a sodding monster asylum, which we just talked about. Yep. And partaking in a super vamp team up with the pretty boy, which is vague enough that we can say it's Angel Season 5, but really it's a reference to a story in that old IDW canon that we're not talking about. And a couple of those references will come up, but it's fine. Yeah, it's not, like, specific enough. He's like, that one time that me and Angel did this super specific thing. Yeah, exactly. So you don't really have to... He's teamed up with Angel Plenty. Exactly. We can just roll with it. It's okay. But he goes back to his apartment after being chased by another demon. And he says that no one knows about the apartment. So this is a different apartment than the one he had, but we're going to say it's the same apartment that he had in Angel Season 5, even though Wes and Gunn definitely both visited there. Right. But I like his little old lady neighbor. She seems very nice. She just wants to talk to Spike, and Spike being Spike, you know, doesn't really want to hang out. And he busts in, and he finds your best buddy. Oh, Lauren! That's right. Uh, we should mention this up front. This is the same creative team that worked on the last book, Brian Lynch and Franco Uru. And it's still consistent. They still work very well together. My complaints about the writing of the last one are pretty much the same here. Established character voices are right on point. But every supporting character sounds exactly the same and basically is just the writer's voice. Yeah. And the only weird part about this book to me, besides the whole, like, it doesn't actually really fit anymore, is that Spike and Lauren didn't really interact at all. And this is their second book playing together. But I like that because I like both of those characters. I, and I wish they had had more interaction. So I'm fine reading something like this. I love Lauren. And I, and obviously Spike, it's his book. So I wasn't sad that he was there. It was more just... That was the only part that felt awkward because it was never previously established. Here we find Lorne, and Lorne has a secret videotape to show him. A VHS. A VHS tape. Oh. Oh, 2004, when I guess this is supposed to take place. Yeah, so he has a VHS tape, and Spike's all excited, and it turns out to be smile time with the puppets again. Yeah, Spike thought it was going to be porn. Yeah, I'm more excited that it's smile time. Spike and Lauren watching porn together. A little weird combination. So I'm excited that it's smile time. And they're singing in Japanese. Except that, and we find out that smile time's puppets have regrouped and decided to take over Japan now instead of American television. Well, these are all new puppets too, except for Ratio Hornblower, who Wesley ripped his face off and then stabbed him with it. Yeah. He's fine now, there's some duct tape there. Yeah, he got restitched up. But the, the Smile Time creators have moved their way to Japan to take over the Japanese kids. Lauren reveals that there was an envelope sent that just says, For Spike on it. Right. With the weirdest choice of number of exclamation points. Two. I don't like that. I do use, one, do three. Never yeah, use, use two. I use two all the time. Why? What does it mean? It means I'm more excited than one, but I'm less excited than three. Mm, I don't like it. It means two. It's an awkward number. I like it. So, here's where... I started to, I mean, okay, it's called Shadow Puppets, and you see the cover, and it has Smile Time Puppets on it, but we get to this point, and I had a little pause, mostly because I really enjoyed the Smile Time episode. The problem with Smile Time... I didn't need it redone. Smile Time is too popular in the fandom. Smile Time People was People latched onto that so hard, when it, more than they should have. I loved the little reference to it in the last Spike book where he like yeah, hallucinated small. the puppets. I thought that was fantastic. I didn't need to relive the whole puppet fighting again. I do like that in Spike's apartment he has an angel doll that he's hung with a noose. That is true. Yeah, I didn't notice I that the first time around. I don't know where he got that angel doll. No, me neither. Maybe he made it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, why not? Lauren that's... says, come to Japan with us. Yeah, that's kind of my whole issue with this is that I just didn't need smile time again but knowing that i'm gonna get smile time again okay let's roll with it spike says he doesn't want to go to japan but a demon attacks him so he goes you know what? i'll go to japan they go to a plane because apparently there's supernatural planes that you can hop on because he would be dusted the minute they cross time zones i wasn't sure if that was because the light like if the sunlight yeah. yes it's just a sunlight thing you can't really fly in a plane and avoid sunlight well you could pull down the window shades but everyone else has windows Okay. All right. Too anyway. much light. Okay. So they arrive in Japan. And they're set upon by ninjas immediately. But are these regular ninjas? Of course not. They're puppet ninjas. Because they should be. I actually kind of like the puppet ninjas. So do I. I like 
if you're gonna have like disposable fodder like you usually do, you might have like random demon or vampires. Have some fun with it. Make them puppet ninjas. Right. I really enjoyed that if they they decided to go smile time on this, so they really went smile time. They had a lot of fun with this whole world, and they really played it up more than they did an angel, and they. They expanded upon the Smile Time universe, which yeah, I appreciated. because they didn't need to mess around and set it up. They could just go like, look, evil puppets. Right, exactly. You don't need to explain the evil puppets. Yeah, so I really liked that they expected me to already know Smile Time because I did. But they fight some puppets, but then the main evil puppets show up. And they do it's, some fun little wordplay things, but... Yeah, there's a lot of like, we're puppets, but we're evil, and we like to give you moral lessons while also sounding super evil. And also like... No, that was my cousin whose name was Marco. I'm Polo. Just... Other way around. Oh. But yeah, so the main puppet looks exactly like the last main evil puppet, but apparently they're just cousins, and they have very distinct differences. They're as different as night and day. Polo loved pigeons. I dig rubber duckies. Polo had a paperclip collection, and I'm all about eating cookies in bed. Also, he was a wuss, and I'm hardcore. I really like the eating cookies in bed part. I'm more with... Whichever one this is. The new one. I thought you were going to be like, I'm more with the paperclip collecting. Why? The alive one. Fun fact, paperclip in French is trombone, because it looks like a trombone. Okay, moving on. We are moving on. But they're on a rooftop above Spike while they're threatening him, and they shoot Spike with a really great fourth wall joke. Yeah, this is one that, even before I read this, you told me it probably four times. Ah, because I like it. And so what do they shoot him with? Official cannon. Exactly. And what does Spike say? I really hate official canon. Yep. Congratulations, Spike Shadow Puppets. You are official canon. Yep. Confusing, barely works official canon, but you snuck your way in there. Yeah, so it's pretty It's pretty ridiculous. Um, They just have a big, giant, cannon. orange cannon. And they shoot him with it. Yeah. It's official canon. An official canon will come back, and I love that. Yeah, they make that little wordplay a couple times, and luckily they don't overuse it. No, but I'm happy that it's there. Yeah, the more puppets attack. Mm -hmm. Except a whole swarm of ninja puppets. This one, side note, tells you where the issues break, and I really appreciated that, because it was going to be another one of those situations where all of a sudden we jump to a whole new scene and we didn't really finish up the last one. Makes perfect sense for the end of an issue. Makes less than perfect sense if you think you're reading it all the way through. Yep. So issue two starts five months ago. And we see... um. One of the Smile Time puppets. It's not one we've ever seen before. His name is Trots. He's he a horse. He's very cute. But he has square pupil, uh, rectangular pupils like a goat, which is confusing. He's a puppet. Okay, moving on. He's a demon puppet. He's less demony now. But where is he? In Serenity. No. He is. He's at Mosiac. Oh, well, there, that too. Is he really? Yeah. Makes so much sense. Wait. He's at Mosaic. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to leave that or edit around. <laughs> in any case, yeah, in he's the... in a room at Mosaic that's called Serenity. <laughs> yeah, that whole cast of characters. Yeah, that makes so much sense. Yeah. I recognize them all and just didn't think to put two and two together. I think that's just the name of their little therapy group. I know, I liked it though. Yeah, another little... Yeah, that was definitely not a... Not a subtle a... reference. Yeah. About as subtle as Lauren singing the theme in the last one. Then we flash forward to the future. Or now. Or... 2004, so quite a ways in the past. Oh, whatever. And Spike's still being under a gigantic pile of ninja puppets, so they're not very ninja-like. They're more into the pig pile. But he thinks he's gonna but die. they're also puppets, so, like, how much damage can they cause with... They have swords. They do have swords, but, like, with their physical moves, like, how much damage can they really cause? Angel beat up Spike as a puppet. I guess so. Any case, but he's being beat up by puppets. He's like, well, I'm gonna die, so... While he's thinking about death, he goes to think what everyone will say about his death and he has this weird little mental thought of Wes and Angel talking and I love the art on Angel he's drawn to look especially douchey yeah like he just he has very vertical hair but he just looks like the douchiest frat boy you've ever seen like I mean Wes kind of even looks like a frat boy here not as bad as Angel no 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 Angel is drawn to be just ridiculous he's also holding a beer oh yeah just Angel swigging beers Right, that everyday occurrence. But yeah, either way, Angel looks really stupid, and Wes and Angel are talking, and they're just like, he died because a bunch of puppets piled on him. Well, at least he died like he lived. Stupidly. Stupidly. Thanks for that. You're welcome. Because they say it together in the book. They do. 
So then... Spike's eyes, like, bulge open, and he's like, no, this will not happen. Well, no, he, then he just uses Spikeism. So he's like, like hell, like sodding hell, and bursts out of a pile of puppets. It's kind of like in the second Matrix movie when Neo was being piled on by all of the Agent Smiths. Also, that movie sucks. I've never seen the Matrix. Hate... Matrices? Um, the first one used to be good. It hasn't aged very well, and the sequels are all terrible. I never saw the Matrices. But Spike and Lauren are probably going to be killed by puppets. But Spike is saved by a mysterious ninja lady. Who I'm assuming also saves Lauren. Oh, yeah. We Lauren's don't really fine. see Lauren get saved, but well, all she of a th- sudden we're all together Well, again. she thinks that Lauren's a dragon and can protect himself. And he can't. She's with a mysterious woman who's like, no, he just has green skin, none of the, no powers of a dragon. She's like, well, that sucks, and he's useless. Yeah. And ninja lady has a huge crush on Spike immediately. Well, once he turns off vampire lemon face. Also, my new favorite term for vamp face is vampire lemon face. Yeah, so she immediately Also made me think of Liz Lemon as a vampire. It would be a very different book. Liz Lemon, a as, vampire? Yes. Less cheese, more blood. So they have, they have to quickly run away because all the puppets are set on fire. Have we read about any fire starters recently? No. Okay. J.K. Lulz. Um No. Yes. Um, It's Beck. Beck is there and she's wearing a big black trench coat. She kind of looks. A spike. And she looks kind of goth cute is now. That? And she's smoking cigarettes. Oh, she turned into little Spike. And she's speaking British, even though she's not British. So every time that I say something British, it kind of sounds like that. Awkward. Yeah. But who else is back? Beta George. Oh, you got excited, then you answered your own question. I did. I love the. Uh, I love all the Beta George dialogue. I um, like that he wants people to call him Dark George I, I now. Goes, uh, Spike's like George. He goes. George, Beta George is no more, Spike. Now all that remains is Dark George. Kidding. Beta George will do fine. And he goes to tell the story of his resurrection, and he's just cut off, and he's like, damn it, guys. All he's right, like, whatever, fine. I'm fine, I'm back. Moving on. And this is really why this book has to count as canon, because George was killed in the last book, and then he's going to be literally in the next issue that we read after all of this, so he kind of needs to be alive. Yeah, and this book is one of those things that it's not so bad. That yeah, it's, it's not. It's inconsequential, kind of overall, but bringing George back is important. Yeah. Plus, we love George. We do love George. He's a telepathic fish. For those, yeah, for those who haven't listened, Beta George is a telepathic fish. Which, compared to the puppets that are happening in this, he's not that crazy. Yeah, he just flies around. Yeah. He's a giant fish. Yeah. He's probably, like, three feet tall. Which... Oddly, later on we'll come to this, uh, Lauren has some issues about being, like, the weird one out. He's not in this group, but he, like, brings it up frequently later on in this book, and it, I don't know why Beta George should never talk him off a cliff. Beck reveals that she's the one who sent Spike the tape, and she knows that Smile Time is going global, and it has to be stopped now, and she knows that Spike dealt with them before. Because it looks like the horse trot. Trots? Trots. His name is Trots. Trots. The horse Trots uh, was her roommate and also in her therapy group at Mosaic. And one night, you know, he's like telling them all and he's like, smile time will get me, smile time will get me. And they're all like, you're going to be fine. You're going to be safe. And she wakes up and there's his head in her bed. What movie is that referencing? One of the Godfathers, right? I've never seen those Godfather either. one. Okay. See? I know. What a shame. Speaking of references, I missed one and it's... Instead of cleverly editing it back in, I'm just going to talk about it now. And I'm not sure if it's a real reference or not, but I'm going to say it is, because it's one of my favorite little comic booky things. In Japan, Spike has a contact, whose name is Turk. Yes. And Turk is um, a daredevil informant who Frank Miller really used a lot of. And then even in one, he went over to do Dark Knight Returns. I think they mentioned Turk in, even though, you know, a different company and all that. But I always like seeing Turk's name pop up. And I Turk, just always love that. Turk is also an informant here who dies very quickly. Yeah, but Turk dies in this. But I just, I don't know if it is or not, but I'm going to say that having an informant named Turk is a reference and one that I enjoy greatly. I would believe that. But that happened a while ago when they first showed up in Japan and then Turk's head was there. Yeah. Because I was reminded because of this horse head here. Right. We're Connecting it all together. We're big on chopping, chopping people's heads off. But the thing that we never really deal with is how Trots died. Like who got in there, who killed Trots. I think it's just a ninja puppet. All right. Well, there you go. But no, they never actually say who kills Trots. And then, like, if they're really that concerned, shouldn't they have killed everybody that heard about Trots' little Then you wouldn't have a Godfather thing. reference. So back in Japan, 
we learn that our new ninja lady's friend's name is Tok Shinobu. But and, we just call her Tok most yeah. of the time. And Beck didn't hire her. She cannot be bought. Perchance, she can be seduced, but never bought, handsome vampire. I also like that he's called handsome vampire in all these. No, they have some weird, awkward flirting. She puts a knife to his throat, and then he puts... A knife to her throat. Oh, but a much bigger one. Oy vey. It's a penis thing. Oy vey. Moving on. I didn't do it. I didn't read it that way. Oh. I did. <laughs> yeah, of course you did. Um, So they go back to Talk's place to gear up with some weapons, and Beck is a little bit jealous. She's afraid that they're having some coital biting behind closed doors. Yeah. So she's, like, listening at the door. Not my reaction. No, it was no, weird. No, I've been like, let's run. And so their big plan is to break into Smile Time, basically. basically they don't have much of a plan. try to blow it up. Yeah, we're going to go to Smile Time. Because Tok has built a lot of bombs in her life. Because why not? If you're a ninja, build like a bomb. But just, like, stocking up on them. I don't really think of ninjas going with bombs very well. So anyway. they go to Smile Time, and I love the room they go into. It's called Geppetto's. Yep. And it's where they It's a the factory of just ninja puppets being built. An army of ninja puppets. But I like that it's a giant sewing machine. Yeah. As usual, there's a fight that breaks out. Spike fights Ratio Hornblower, who just beats the hell out of him. Pretty much. And then they wander into that room again. The don't room. Yes, the don't room. Specifically the don't room. And that same guy in a wife beater with a towel over his head and sitting is sitting in front of a big egg. Yeah, like under it kind of. And the big egg shoots lasers again. And the lasers do the same thing as they did before. But and... this is so referential. Like, it literally shoots like it did with Angel. Lauren and Spike are in this room, and it sh- and George, and it shoots the three of them back into a pile of empty boxes, just like what happened with Angel, because, you know, these rooms have to have empty boxes in the mm-hmm. don't room. Yep, and then all three of them are turned into puppets. Well, Spike Peter has George to... George is an adorable puppet, but, P.S. But Spike has to abuse the dialogue from the episode, and he says, we little puppet man, three times in two pages. Yeah. This, that I was think... a good line in the show when they used it once. When he sees Angel for the first time, he's right. like, Spike, he's like, you're a, you're a wee little puppet man. And then they fight and it's hilarious. But here it's just, it's abused. I think that I was, I was more on board with the smile time stuff until that scene at that exact moment when the same thing happened in the same way. And I understand that it's a reference, but it was, it was too much of a reference for me, and but it... we don't dwell on it. It's, Things go very differently after this. And if you want, listener, I don't know how much they would go for now, but I know right around before this series came out in Post Angel, there was a Spike puppet released. How terrifying would that be? That's how the episode got unnecessarily huge. Yeah, but still, terrifying. And so ends issue two. Yep. And we learn through again the same dialogue as before that they have the proportionate excitability of a puppet your size. So now Beta George has red lines. Yes. And Beta George... Which, he's a telepath fish, so he might have pulled that out of Spike or Lauren's brain. Could have. That's that's really good. Gonna roll with that. that. Excuses. I like that excuse. Um, I'm also really okay with Beta George playing the George... Playing the George. Oh, George Weasley. Playing the Fred role. Fred and George. The twins. Yeah, yeah. So I mix them up. Anyway. Fred and... Fred and George are not twins in this. They're not twins in Fred this. Fred is a lady and George is a fish. Which, Aww. if you heard those two names, you but might not Fred think those things. Both of them. Don't name your children Fred. Or at least your fictional characters. Or George, because one's a fish and the other one loses his ear. But anyway. They laugh. I and like that George is Once Fred. again, we little puppet used for the fourth time in like six pages. Yeah. Although, unrelated, but I do like how they drew the puppets. Yeah, I think they look really good, and especially, like, George is a departure, because he's a floating telepathic fish. Mm-hmm. I mean, they look right on to what the angel one looks like. But then the evil puppets bust in, and Spike can't pick up his sword. Because he's too little. Poor little Spike. And there's a fight, and Spike takes out Ratio Hornblower, which is a name I like to say. Yeah, you do like to say that one. But he's a big, fat puppet. He kind of looks like the Grimace, but an evil the Grimace. Yeah, he's not good. But anyway, he kind of squishes Spike. And then Lauren pulls his arm off when he's trying to pull Spike out. Because puppets are fragile creatures. I guess so. So Lauren beats up uh, Ninja. Mm-hmm. Do I need to keep referring to them as puppets in every sentence? Puppet Lauren beats up a puppet ninja with the cursed hand of the puppet vamp with a soul. And then our two human ladies come back in, which is helpful because they can actually get our heroes out of this. And we find out... 
a little bit more about the whole Smile Time plan. They have something called Operation Duck and Cover. Right. And so we don't know yet what Duck and Cover is, but we will soon find out. Or or will we? Eventually we will find out. It's not going to take that long. Uh, They escape using one of Tox bombs and they go and have some sushi. Yep. I don't know. Can puppets eat? No. That's the thought I had. Well, I mean, no, I'm going to say no. But I like that Puppet Beta George is, he doesn't say anything, but he has like covers his mouth with his fin like he's shocked and horrified at all of this raw fish that's being consumed in front of him. Yeah, I I liked it. it. I liked the thought of dining with puppets. And so then our lovely ladies go and they try and figure out what's happening. Yeah, they they just go to essentially a montage of them trying to figure out what Operation Duck and Cover is. Lauren stows Spike's arm back on. And they have a little heart to heart. It's very sweet. About how Lauren's the freak. And then there's a kid sitting next to them, so Spike steals what he's reading, because evidently Spike can read Japanese now. And he realizes that the most popular children's show previously... Well, he made Lauren feel better. They had a moment. Lauren's like, I'm a freak. He's like... We're all freaks. He's like, I'm the freakiest one here, so shut up, number two. Yeah, pretty much. And Lauren's like, you made me feel better. It was very sweet. But there's also a giant floating puppet fish who's a telepath, so... They're really definitely not in the first spot. Yeah, so I like it. Spike can read Japanese for some reason. And he figures out that the previous show... That was super popular before, Smile Time, Dickie Duck, is coming back to Japan. Exactly, and and the creator of this show has been missing for about a year. He might have been a little old man. He might have been a little old man. There might have been some blood spattered on a picture of a duck. And But we cut over to Smile Time, and they're preparing to take out Dickie Duck. They have their army of puppet ninjas, but they know there's only one way to beat Spike. And it's with Puppet Angel. Nope, it's with Puppet Angelus. Dun dun dun! And he, he starts off by killing one of the main puppets and sucking her felt I guess out of so. her neck. It was very confusing, but his eyes glow. Yeah, because Angelus is evil. Yeah, I guess how are we supposed to know that if he's not glowing? Then we get a little insight into talk, and we find out that her sister is actually one of the ones who has been brainwashed, wiped, whatever, yeah, by Smile Time. Yeah, she gets like that, Time. that Joker smile on her face. Yeah, three years ago. So Smile Time has been in Japan for quite a while now. A couple years ago, her sister was subjected to the puppet curse thing. And so we found out that her motivation for the Smile Time puppets is really to get her sister back. So she's been training for the past three years to be able yeah. to kill puppets. So Spike goes and he finds the That's old man. That's a ridiculous man. statement. You just let me get away with that. She'd been training for three years to kill puppets. I own a comic book store. I say a lot of ridiculous sentences in my day, and I don't always appreciate how silly they are. All right, keep going. I should. I should really take a step back and enjoy the little things. You should start tweeting them out. Sentence I just said. Hashtag comic store owner statements sentences. I don't know. We need a better hashtag, but I'll, it's I'll a good concept. So Spike finds the old man who created Dickie Duck, but turns out he's just a giant puppet and he's dead. Yeah, sad. So he tries to kill Spike, but no, because... No, he's just a puppet in a chair. Sorry, Sp- Angelus tries to kill Spike. He gets a sword in the back. Yeah, and he's like, Angel? Just kidding, Angel wouldn't kill me with a sword in my back. But he seems to be fine, even though he's just been gutted. He's a puppet. Their anatomy's different. Yes, it's stuffing. Yeah. He's like, this is an angel. I'm facing off against Tickle Me Angelus. And so we enter the final issue. And this one... You'll love it or you'll hate it. I don't think there's much the middle ground. Yeah, it's over the top. So you're either going to over the top love it or over the top be like, I'm all done with this. Yeah, I think I fall on the side of not liking it. I respect that they committed to it. I like the ending. Yeah. But most of the stuff that happens little... in the middle. So Spike's fighting and jealous. And then, uh-oh, he's grabbed by another puppet. And it's puppet gun. But not just the gun that we've known recently. This is... Do they ever refer to him as anything? Street smart gun? I think, yeah. He's a street smart gun, and then he comes face to face with... Lawyer gun. Yep. And so there are two gun puppets who are attacking him at once. Except the lawyer gun has no hair, and whenever he was wearing a suit, he always had hair. Okay, so, well, you know, continuity issue. Again. Um, He's also a puppet, so I'm gonna go with maybe not... Maybe it's the puppet's fault. I also hate street smart gun. Because he sounds like an idiot. He does. Like a lot and of lawyer gun is like 
ridiculous as well. Yeah, and there was no attempt to like capture the character voice. This is just takes them in like in extreme directions, which is I'm sure the point because this guy is gonna write gun very soon and he has the voice down very well. Yeah, and and we will come to find out when we meet some other puppet friends that they're really just exaggerations of themselves. So yeah, and Spike has two sides, and both guns rush at him, and he stabs them both in the eye. Which is a reference to the IDW canon where Gunn had, uh, was forced to wear an eye patch. Oh, like Xander? Like Xander. So even in the last Spike book, I don't think I mentioned it. I just get glass eyes? But he talks about how he's going to have to do this alone. Like not even um, a smartass with an eye patch will be able to help him. And that was a reference to either Xander or Gunn at the time. But now it's just Xander. Okay. Well, good to know. The eye patch thing will never be referenced again. Okay. But they did stab his eye out, and he keeps fighting the puppets, and all of a sudden, we have Puppet Drew, and this is my favorite puppet moment in this. It is. She's fun as a little puppet. She is, because Drew would be a fantastic puppet. This was my, this was the one moment I was like, yes, I'm super on board for making weird puppets. But this is when also Spike goes like, okay, it's confirmed that, like, you aren't, like, the originals turned into puppets, you're just puppets they made. Because Drusilla would be very excited about being a puppet. Which I loved that fact. She would be very excited. I loved her. Oh, I like, yeah, what's the line? If you were Drusilla, you'd be so orgasmic that you were turned into a doll you couldn't bloody well function. I love that. She wouldn't be able to function. <laughs> she would, no, she'd she, want to go do something with Miss Edith. Yeah, it would be fantastic. Puppet Drew would be the best. Well, she still is. I like her. I mean, I love Drew anyway. But then... Spike is attacked by three different Wesleys. Classic Wesley, looking all nerdy with a tie in his glasses. Spoiler Wesley, which this one really throws the timeline into question, too. Because Spoiler Wesley is Wesley when he's dead. Awkward. And this originally happened post-show, so how is it a spoiler? And now that it's before the show ends, how do these puppets know the future? I don't know. Good question. Spoiler Wesley is a problem. Yeah, he's a problem And then New child. Wesley. So what's the difference between Spoiler Wesley and New Wesley? I don't Isn't know. Spoiler Wesley just New Wesley, just wearing that, a turtleneck? Is that Wesley when he got his throat slit? No, because his guts, the, the blood's in his gut. Okay, well, I don't know. These puppets know the future. They're future-knowing puppets. Yep, that's exactly what it is. But, come to find out, we don't quite make it before they turn on the giant satellite dish that well, we haven't... views out all of... The smile time nastiness to all the kids. Yeah, but what we discover is that Dicky Duck isn't the competing show. Dicky Duck is smile time. It's a weird twist that doesn't really add anything to anything. Yeah, that they just kind of merged the two together, like, okay. and it was like, okay, fine. I wasn't really that concerned about Japanese children's show ratings, but... So all of the puppets are arguing because they're extreme versions of their regular selves, and Spike is captured by Puppet Cordelia and Puppet Connor, because mm-hmm. apparently the puppets are aware of Connor, and so is Spike. Weird. All weird. Ah, God, I can't wait to try and dive into that. By the way, I don't have an answer. Not good. All right, It well, doesn't work. Let's keep going with this one. But Smile Time is being broadcast throughout the world. And so we're taking over all the children of the world and all of the lonely single men. And my favorite is they show, um, they say, yeah, this concert is being broadcast throughout the free world. No child or lonely adult male is safe. And the lonely adult male they show is Joss. Oh, I was wondering why I recognize that face. Because that's what he looked like around this time. That's really funny. So Joss is a lonely adult male. That's sad. I think he's doing okay. He's probably fine. Connor and Cordelia let him go because they start making out. Right. And Spike gets beaten with official cannon again. By Illyria. By Illyria. But Spike gets to then steal the official cannon and he gets to use it to destroy Smile Time. But I like Wesley and... Fred are talking about it. It's like, why did Angelus have to be so rude? Official canon is so complicated. So many people with so many opinions. Yeah. At that point, it's not a funny inside little, like, you might not have noticed, like, I really hate official canon, but this one is... This one's a little on the nose. This one broke the nose. Yeah. This shattered the fourth wall, and you're full of glass from said wall. Yeah. So, anyway, we keep fighting as puppets. Lauren uses the power of song to destroy Dickie Duck. Yep, and then and then Spike shoots Smile Time with official cannon, blows it up, and that's the end of Smile Time. Well, Angel accuses him. He's like, you know, for, or I'm sorry, Puppet Angelus accuses him. He's like, 
you know, for such a loner, you keep on hanging out with a bunch of people, and Spike's like, yeah, you know what, I actually needed everyone to destroy you. So guess what, you dickhead puppet, I like people. Wow, classy. So. I can't use Britishisms. It sounds like Beck, it'd be awkward. Yep, and then we just kind of see the wrap-up. Everybody goes home. Top goes to her sister. And but our puppet friends have not turned back into their normal selves, not for a little while. I like how Talk is also being set up here as like a potentially recurring character, and we never see her again. Yeah. It would have been cool. She's not bad. Well, she's owned by a different company now. Oh, poor Talk. Yay, licensing. Oh, whatever. So Spike and Lauren are going back to LA, and they turn back into their regular selves. Yep, and Beck and Beta George go back to Mosaic. And Spike goes into his apartment and runs into the same little old lady. And he comes clean. He's like, hey, I'm a vampire. And I'm not a bad vampire. She's like, okay, do you want to come play Mahjong? And he's like, sounds good. And then I like the last panel. It kind of sells this, la- this last issue. I'm not a big fan of because it's so over the top. Which I can also stand understand that people might love this issue for being so over the top. Yeah. But the last panel is Horatio Hornblower, who has a bunch of new parts on him now that he's been blown up and presumably reassembled for a third time, is waving a little flag that says, Moral of the story, everybody needs somebody. Also, puppets should probably not pick fights with vampires. It seriously never works out for them. And it's just kind of charming. Which is also, once, like, if that's the moral of the story, you could have told that same story without the abuse of smile time. Yeah, yeah. But then we have Beta George, and Beck in there, and his dialogue is very small, but I love him. This goes, seriously, I'm still feeling puppety. I can't go canon as a puppet. The internet is complaining about me enough as it is. Which, what are you doing, internet? George is the best. George is the best. So shut the hell up, 2007 internet. But I really, I liked that George came back in this. I I wish that George would come back again, because I haven't seen him in years now, and I miss him. I wish that we complained about the canon a little bit less. I liked the first time it came back, the couple times it came back in this last issue. Where they were literally beating Spike with cannon. It was a little too much for me. This one, it's dumb fun. It's also innocent. And as far as brooding as like the Spike and Angel stuff always is, it's not a terrible thing to always have a little bit of fun. Yeah. If you really liked, if you really liked um, But the problem is, time, the last like time it. that we had a little bit of fun was the exact same premise. Right. So. No new fun, same old thing. It could have been way, way worse. Oh, yeah. um, I That's... think if you were going to do something with Smile Time, I think they did the best you could do with it. Yeah, I say this counts as official canon. Huh, so you, unlike the 2007 internet, are not going to yell at it as much. No, I just feel bad for how I have to place it now. Yeah. It's not the book's fault. No, the book tried pretty hard to... And it worked at the time with the canon... Fit in its own world. At the time it worked. Just doesn't work as well right now, but it kind of has to count because George comes back to life. Yeah. Plug. But I was going to plug, but I'm just excited because we are out of the, we're fitting things in between episodes or after episodes. And next week we begin the best arc in any of the comics. And I am looking forward to that. Wait, so was this the penultimate or the ultimate before we got out? So this was the ultimate. Damn it. Comic <laughs> before we got out of the shows. But hey, now we're free of the shows is the silver lining there. Hmm. We'll work on our SAT words next time. Yeah. I know I know what it means. I know you do. It's just not the penultimate story of the season. Okay. Or whatever or anything. Next <laughs> week Next week we're back to talk about Angel After the Fall, and I couldn't be more excited. It's my favorite stuff. But until then, if you want to catch that episode a week early, you can find it over on Patreon. Throw a buck our way, you'll get the episode early. And we're also over at EditorsNoteComics.com on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or Gmail. I bet you can figure out the address. Or you can go check out my other show, the Editors Note Comics Podcast, a weekly news show where we also cover a topic that's topical. Without me, but that's okay. No, I, I'm running a network here, come on. Oh, sorry. Sorry, a sorry. A podcast empire, if you will. Yep. It is quite the little empire you have going on. Easy does it. Start calling you, I don't know what, the czar potentate. We'll be back next week with some more official canon. See you then.